In this video, we're going to review an MRI of a cervical spine in someone impacted by MS. I'm using a new format, and I'm curious what you think. So don't turn away, because that starts right now. Hey! Howdy. Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. Today, I wanted to share my screen as I review an MRI of the cervical spine of someone impacted by MS. And here we have a side view, the so-called sagittal view, where you can see the back of the head and the back of the neck. Here you can see the front of the neck and actually the jawline. This is the person's tongue. And here you see the spinal cord, this gray structure coming down the center. On either side, the white is actually the cerebral spinal fluid, the CSF, and the spinal cord is floating in that CSF. I'd like to start off by pointing out something which is outside of the central nervous system or outside the spinal cord. These are vertebral bodies, they're bones, and these are discs. So you have a bone, a disc, a bone, a disc. Now this disc has been smooshed, and you see that it's pushing out. And this is called a herniated nucleus pulposus, or a slipped disc. And it's something that can impact the spinal cord, it can cause neurological symptoms, it's outside of MS, but it's important, I feel, as we review MRIs, to look at the whole picture. And I just wanted to give that example. So just on quick visual inspection, as you look down the gray spinal cord, you see that this person has a lot of white that you wouldn't normally expect to see. And these represent MS lesions. And so I want to characterize them. For starters, let's split up our screen so that we can look at this study with two different views. Now I'm keeping that sagittal side view on the left, and I'm throwing up a top-down view, a so-called axial view, on the right. And these are both from the same study, just two different angles. Now what we've done is we've linked them. So as I move the picture on the right, you can see where I am, what level I'm at, by that blue line on the left. And so this way we can really triangulate and characterize the lesions. So starting at the very top, which is the base of the brain, my eyes are over here, I'm going to start to come down. And at the very top, so this is at the C1 vertebral body level, I can already see some white there and it extends down a bit. And so if I was formally doing this, I would write down the level it's at and the location and the shape and size and all that kind of stuff. So here we come down to the C2 level and again, we see significant white in that spinal cord that should be all nice and gray. Here's a lesion, this time it's on the left and we're at the two, three, C3 vertebral body level. So here we see another hint of a lesion. There's another one on this side. And then down here at C2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, at C7, we see another posteriorly located lesion. Here we're picking up another one at the top of the thoracic spine. And again, so this person has a heavy T2 burden of disease. In English, they have a lot of spots. And we can ask ourselves questions about how old the spots are. One way to try to do that is to look at the administration of contrast and see if any of those lesions light up. So let's do that together. Here I'm going to keep that side view on the left and I'm going to keep the top down view on the right. But I've changed the picture so this is after the administration of contrast. And fortunately, there's no abnormal contrast enhancement throughout the entire cord. That's very reassuring, telling us that none of those lesions are new. We can still ask the question, how old are they? And in order to answer that, we're going to have to change some things around again. What I'm going to do now is split my screen up in a slightly different way. I'm keeping that new scan that we've been looking at today on the left. On the right-hand side, I'm going to pull forward an old scan. Let's do this one from 2015. And what this will allow us to do is to compare side by side the two different scans and see if we can see new lesions that have cropped up compared to the last time we looked at them. So I've got 2015 on the right and 2020 on the left, and we can compare and contrast. If you were to only compare the side sagittal views, it would be really hard to see it but we don't have to be limited by that.
So now we have two of the new scans on the left and two views on the right from the old scans. And then we can start to walk down the spinal cord. And this time, if we see a lesion like we do here, we want to come over to the old scan and see if we could see it back then. And I'll make this slightly bigger. And the answer is yes. If we cut through the same slice, the lesion that we see in 2020 was seen way back in 2015. And this way we know that that lesion is not new and it's at least five years old. I'm really excited to share these films with you and I'd love some feedback if this is something that you enjoy and if you'd like to see more content along these lines looking at MRIs together. Please leave your thoughts in the comment section below. I look forward to reading them. Until my next video or my next live stream or the next time I see you at the Boster Center for MS, this is Aaron Boster saying be safe and take care.